So you want to use Travis CI with GitHub Pages to set up an automated deployment pipeline so that once you just, you're just you done with your code, you see that it's good in development, you just push it on master and if you have some tests, all those tests run, they, if they pass, a build is generated and is automatically deployed on GitHub Pages. Everything is automatic. So let's just see in this video how we can set up something like that. Also, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon. It really helps. Let's get into it. First of all, make sure that you have your um, code live on the repo. In our case, I'm using this demo app, which I um, created a video on how to host your own content on GitHub Pages. So that this rep repository is related to that. And you could see that if I go to like mayholempt.github.io slash demo app, it pretty much shows us that particular app code, right? So let's just make this deployment automatic using Travis and GitHub pages. First of all, you're going to need a new account on Travis CI. Make sure you go to travisci.org, which is a free Travis service for open source. Just go ahead and create an account and you would be landing into a page which looks like this. You might not have something like this yet. So go ahead and click your uh, icon here. And right here, when the repositories load, find your repository by pretty much saying demo app in our case. Once you find that, just enable Travis on this. So this would, again, just like I said, would enable some web hooks for Travis CI to take a look at. And you can actually go ahead and see that this web hook is automatically added by Travis to your repository, which triggers whenever you create, delete, or, you know, pretty much do all of these any of these issues any of these actions right on your repository you don't need to worry much about this what you need to do next is once you have enabled the hook you need to configure travis on your project so here's my project the very next thing we need to do is we need to actually create a dot travis dot yml file here dot travis dot yml file now once you have this file present and when you start committing this file on your repository, Travis would automatically trigger on every push or, you know, whatever actions there are defined and would start building your project in the configuration which you supply here. So let's pay close, close attention here what this configuration should look like. All right, so first things first, we need to have a language set up, right? So our language for this project is obviously Node.js, but you know, Travis could work with a wide variety of languages. That is why this is the sub, this is the provided option. Then what you need to do is you need to supply what version of Node you want to test your whatever you want to do against, right? In our case, I'm using Node 11.6.0. You could specify multiple versions here, right? And it would just work. So I'm just going to specify just one version because we just want to test some things and build our... Um, our source code against this node version and Travis would automatically take care of that. Next thing is we need to specify that we want to cache all the NPM dependencies just in case you are building again and again. So this would speed up some stuff. Now comes the build life cycle. What happens now is Travis gives you certain hooks which are fired um, in in a certain manner. For example, there are the life cycle builds Travis provides you the first one is before install, which is going to be fired just before everything, right? The next one which fires is install when when these dependencies and stuff are installed, right? Not the NPM dependencies, the dependencies which you provided above, right? The third hook is before script. Now these are executed in their order. The first one is before install, then install, before script, then script. Then once your build is done, either the after success hook would be fired or after failure, after failure, right? Then we have um, after script hook as well. We also have um, hooks like before deploy, we have deploy and we have after deploy. So you see that we get a ton of flexibility here, but obviously we are not going to make use of all of those. So let's just see which hooks we are going to make use of here. So if we take a look by default, install actually does what it does is that it gives you a hook of npm ci right if you want to install you know certain package globally um you could pretty much do it here maybe like webpack or anything if you want 
if you skip this hook then by default travis if you're using node would automatically insert this as npm ci which is just another name for npm install but it's it's it has a bit of differences in the continuous integration based install version kind of checks the package and package log.json dependencies are matched together perfectly it's it's more like for more deterministic builds right once you're done with that what we could do is we could pretty much skip the before script hook at the moment and we could just write a script now this hook would be the place where all of your um build process would go right again if you skip this travis would insert an npm test hook inside this script right so if you don't write this script npm test is what is going to be fired but if you want something more like maybe um you want to build your project then here's the place where you have to write that code but in our case obviously we don't have any tests so we're gonna just use um actually we are using yarn right so we're gonna make use of yarn here instead of npm for this project right but you can use npm as well if you want so we don't have really have any test at the moment but still it won't fail at least it will just show no test present what we should do next is just say yarn run build which, which is going to create our build right and then finally inside our deploy section the things which should go are how you want to deploy it where you want to deploy it and how it should deploy it so here we're gonna say that our provider right here is pages right which internally travis knows you're working with github pages we also need to skip the cleanup that is it, it's going to remove our remove our build files if we don't do with this because we want our build files to be there so it makes sense we also need a github token so that in order to authenticate travis that yes travis is allowed to post on our behalf and we're going to get this github token from our environment which we're going to set in travis ci because you don't want to publicly expose your github token right um, we also want our deployment to happen on our gh pages branch right which we discussed in the video when we created that so once you have that go ahead save your file and commit your changes just before pushing your changes we need to set up our github token right so i'm gonna go ahead right here and inside my dashboard let's just go to our repository which we have here right and go to more options settings and set this as environment variable github token and you need this github token value so go ahead inside your um, settings right here in github and create a new token by going into developer settings personal access tokens and generate a new token uh, let's say this is for travis ci give it a public repo access and generate so you have this token right here i'm going to copy this right here go ahead inside your travis oops and paste it right here and add all right so once you have done that just go ahead and push your build now once you do that you're going to see that it says you it's building now just let it run for some time you could just click here to follow the log just in case you want to see how's everything happening and once it's done you're going to get the skipping a deployment with the pages provider because this branch is not permitted and that is because you need master branch to be deployed not the github pages branch because that branch would actually be created automatically right so we're going to say updated branch commit here and we're going to push again it to master and there we go all right so once it's done you're going to see that it deploys successfully to github pages branch but if you go ahead into your repository and take a look at your github pages branch you're going to see it pretty much looks like just like your main branch and why is that well that is because if you see that you are deploying master branch you're building master branch first and then you're deploying it on github pages which internally deploys it on this branch but travis does not know that you want the build folder to be deployed only the build folder and plus it does not even have the build folder here because in our git ignore file we have placed build right here so that kind of defeats the purpose right well you could go ahead and specify a local directory which is your build directory to be uploaded and then 
deploy it. So we're going to go ahead one more time and say final, finally, something like that. And git push origin master. And there we go. So once you do that, you could see pretty much that this these contents looks like your build folder and it is deployed on GitHub pages branch. Go ahead, go into your GitHub pages right here. And you could see that here is your build folder 17 seconds ago. Travis CI deployed it. And if we take a look here, we have our application right here ready. So let's say you want to change this and you can pretty much go ahead into your SRC app.js right here. You're going to change this to whatever you like. Maybe like my first GitHub project with Travis. Hit save. You're going to comment it to your version control by saying some changes, right? And you push it to master branch. And from this point onwards, Travis would kick in and would take care of all the tests, deployment, all that nasty stuff. You don't have to do anything. So you just have to sit and wait for a while while Travis is testing and building all that stuff. You could pretty much see the status here um, inside your build history. Travis would actually email you as well if the build fails or passes. So that's that. And uh, yeah, you're pretty much getting all of this stuff for free. So that's pretty awesome if you ask me. So yeah, that's all for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe, press the bell icon and like the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you then in the next one.